savage little games. Warning! The following video contains material or images that could be harmful to some audiences. People under the age of 18 or anyone that has to sit down to pee, please click away. In the good old days of the arcades, manufacturers would do anything to keep you playing. Initially, after your lives were spent, the game was over, and if you wanted to play again, you would insert another quarter and start the game experience from scratch. The first arcade game that offered the ability to continue, or as the game calls it, extend your play was 1981's Fantasy. This started a sneaky tactic which would only get sneakier and also play on your emotion in an attempt to rip that last quarter out of your cold, dead hands. Today, I am doing something a little bit different than my usual history of videos and showcasing a topic that has always fascinated me. The sometimes brutal, oftentimes emotional, and sometimes downright hilarious continue screens of days gone by. Some might be obvious, some might not be. So let's take a look at some of the most savage continue screens. The first game on our list might be a bit obvious to some, but it would have to be Final Fight. Final Fight was released in the arcades in 1989 and blew away every other beat-em-up on the market. Developed by Capcom legend Yoshiki Akamoto, which this makes the third video in a row to make mention of this awesome developer, originally it was developed as Street Fighter 89 as a follow-up to Street Fighter 1, although it plays nothing like it. You take control of three different characters, Guy, Cody, and Hagar, who have to take down the Mad Gear gang who has kidnapped Hagar's daughter, Jessica. Everything about this game is a classic, from the nice, tight controls to the large sprites and the simultaneous two-player option. The continue screen is the stuff of nightmares, though, because if you run out of energy, the countdown starts at 9 and it shows you strapped to a chair with a stack of dynamite directly in front of you. The wick will slowly go down in conjunction with the counter and your character will become more and more frantic. Hagar and Guy even try to use their Kryptonian super breath to blow out the wick but to no avail. If you don't put a quarter in then they will die forever. This trend will continue with the two Super Nintendo sequels with their characters being submerged in water and finally being strapped to the ground while spikes are slowly lowered toward you. Another Capcom arcade game to use another fantastic continue screen would be 1993's The Punisher. This one or two player title saw you and Nick Fury take on the scum of New York including Bruno Costa who ordered the killing of Frank Castle's family. This is just a little sidestep on your way to taking down Wilson Fisk also known as the Kingpin. The game was a lot of fun to play allowing 10 enemies on screen at once for some crazy action. The continue screen is very unique indeed. Once your bullet-riddled body has succumbed to your injuries, you are shown on your back while your associates try to perform CPR with an EKG monitor being shown. As the timer slowly ticks away, once it reaches zero, you will flatline and the person performing CPR will throw up their hands in agony and defeat. Very cool and very unique indeed. This continue screen was omitted from the Sega Genesis release. Sly Spy or 
Sly Spy Secret Agent is an arcade game that was released in 1989 by Data East. This game is a run and gun platformer directly inspired by Johnny English, even giving the player the ability to insert a three digit identification code. In all actuality, it's directly inspired by the movies and novels of the James Bond franchise with references to the man with the golden gun as well as various Bond baddies such as Jaws and Oddjob. The game takes place across nine stages set across all of the USA in the dreaded year of 1990X. The plot revolves around your character skydiving, riding a motorcycle, shooting your big gun, and taking out all of the bad guys in an attempt to stop World War III. The game was a lot of fun to play back in the day and I love the James Bond motif as well as the driving and rolling thunder inspired segments. If you persevere and defeat all nine levels, the president congratulates you and you are shown with a bevy of hoochie mamas which you scoop up in your arms and drive away. However, if you succumb to your injuries, you are presented with a continue screen in which a nuclear missile is going to launch. If you fail to insert any quarters, the missiles will launch and it is the end of the world and it's all your fault. When Tecmo Night was released here in America in 1989, it came and went like a fart in the wind. It achieved greater success and more notoriety when it was released as Wild Fang in Japan. The storyline is your basic arcade beat-em-up in which you are a brave warrior that has to defeat the big baddie known as the Wild Fang and all of his minions. Apparently, the Japanese version has a much more detailed storyline. This is a one or two player game in which you take on the role of the Tecmo Knight who has the assistance of Smoke Man and Tiger. You have a change button that allows Tecmo Knight to switch between the two characters each with different fighting styles. Smoke Man uses only punches and kicks and is more powerful but has a very limited range. Tiger sees you riding a tiger as you throw a spiked ball and chain similar to what the character of Rygar uses in the Tecmo Arcade Classic. The game features plenty of blood and gore with heads a popping and blood a spurting and that's even before we get to the continue screen. Once you die, your character is inside of a mouth struggling against a pair of teeth the likes of which I haven't seen since my honeymoon. The mouth will slowly close around you as the counter ticks down to zero and finally your character lets out a blood curdling scream and you are reminded that there is no future. Sticking with Tecmo, let's check out Ninja Gaiden or, for all you British folks, Shadow Warriors which was released in 1989. We are not talking about the incredibly difficult NES classic, but the arcade game which is a one or two player beat em up extravaganza which sees you take on the role of a ninja hired by the US government to defeat an evil cult who has kidnapped the president. You have your usual assortment of punches and kicks, including hanging kicks, flying neck throws, backflips off the walls, and more. You also have to fight an assortment of mini-bosses at the end of each stage. Any game where you can fight against wrestling royalty, such as the Road Warriors, will always get an a in my book. What makes this game stand out aside from the fun gameplay is the awesome continue screen. You are strapped to a table while various demons and creatures look on in ecstasy while a saw blade is slowly lowered towards your chest. 
You are frantically shaking your head no, and if it reaches zero, your character lets out a grunt and the screen turns red. One of the coolest continue screens I have ever seen. The game you probably didn't expect to see on this list but definitely deserves a spot is Toki, which was released by Tad Corporation in 1989. This is a run and gun platform game in which you control Toki, who has more than a passing resemblance to Tarzan as he sets out across several levels with a mini boss at the end of each one. Initially, your girlfriend, Princess Miho, has been kidnapped by the evil Vuku Meldu, and to stop you from rescuing her, you are transformed into the ape we know and love today. Your character can spit out powerful projectiles that you can shoot at various enemies and obstacles that attempt to slow you down. Thankfully, you have a shield and extra speed for extra time to aid you in your quest. The game for the most part is innocent enough, not counting the nipple slip on the attract screen of Princess Miho in the Atari ST version, but the continue screen really puts a quiver in your liver. The princess shows up on a TV screen and as a counter slowly goes down, when it reaches 6, she lets out a scream with a word balloon telling you that you've got to keep playing or she will be killed. If that doesn't want to make you put another quarter in the machine, then I don't know what will. Unless you're pretending she is your ex-girlfriend. A franchise that absolutely needs no introduction is Mortal Kombat, but the one in particular we are talking about today is Mortal Kombat 4, which was released in the arcades in 1997. This game made the jump to 3D while removing a lot of comical elements from the series such as friendships and babalities. Gameplay wise, the run button and the combos both return but also a weapon system has been included allowing each character to pull out a special weapon using a certain button combination. The game was quite a bit more violent than the mild Mortal Kombat 3 and features plenty of polygon blood and gore. Each character has two standard fatalities as well as two stage fatalities which are indeed violent. The continue screen is very cool showing your character spinning round and round as the timer slowly ticks away. As it reaches zero, you hit the bottom where there are numerous bloody spikes and you are impaled while a pool of your own blood oozes out. Not only is it unique, but it's also very gory, but what else would you expect from the mines at Midway? Saturday Night Slam Masters was released by Capcom in 1993. Most people wouldn't expect this game to be on the list, and while it's not violent or gory, it is a bit shocking. Slam Masters is a combination of a traditional wrestling game and a beat-em-up which just so happens to take place inside of a wrestling ring. The game has a roster of 10 different wrestlers, 8 of which are selectable. In addition to a standard single player mode, there is also a team battle royal which allows for up to 4 players simultaneously. What makes the continue screen so <clears throat> savage is that when the game is over your character is shown breathing very heavy or in the case of Hagar is actually clutching his chest. 
as the timer goes down, your breathing gets more and more labored. Once the counter reaches zero, the character has an apparent heart attack and dies. Controversial images are nothing new in arcade games going back to the blood and gore of Chiller or the decapitation scene in Barbarian. We also had pixelated Wangs and Vagine thanks to the Rampage World Tour arcade game. One of the most peculiar shooters I have ever come across was the Cho Anik series. I first encountered this on the Super Famicom in the mid 1990s and in that time, it has progressed over a number of different platforms with one of the best for the PSP. For those of you who don't know, the story revolves around a pair of two muscle-bound brothers who take on all comers in this homoerotic wacky shooter in the vein of Gradius. For example, the first story is about the great galaxy bodybuilding contest where the first prize winner who also had the best body now faces an ever decreasing supply of protein. He invades neighboring star systems in order to establish protein factories to replenish his supply. The Heavenly Realm sends two Anik brothers to vanquish the bad guy and save the day. And it only gets stranger from there. After I played the first title for a couple of hours, my manhood was feeling a bit threatened, so I decided to go to a strip club. The problem was, I ended up going to a male strip club instead. The continue screen in question comes from the game Choanik Zero for the PSP, in which you have to face the big bad of the game, Balzac. That's right, Balzac. After you die... The continue screen shows two men <clears throat> hugging while you mash the X button to build up protein to continue. You have to press X as fast as you can, otherwise you will collapse and die. For once in my life, I am at a loss for words. And that, my friends, are some of the most savage and controversial continue screens of all time. If I missed any, be sure and let me know in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video as it was a lot of fun to make. Oh, and one more thing. If you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. If you would like to contribute but not sign up for my Patreon, you can always click the donate button up above. Thanks everyone for watching.